Thank you for joining us where we quickly talk about requirements traceability through the test case functionality of IBM's ELM solution. The beauty of this solution is that it is built on a, a platform that allows us to plug and play in different capabilities. So you can be using one and automatically move to the other one. I like to think of it as our smartphone, right, where we can drop in apps. When we join the project, what we see is we join a dashboard. And in this dashboard, you can see I have a number of different things going on, right? I can get information about what's recently changed, what comments are going on. And more importantly, in this example, is that I can actually go in and I can actually see what's happening, right, from a testing perspective. So I have all my test cases here, and then I have my requirements, the scripts that have been executed and what the results are, and also the work items that are associated with it, it whether it's a story, most cases it is in this example. Right? So I get a lot of data here from the dashboard, but now let's get into the artifacts, right? So we're working in the requirements management space. And what you'll see is that I have a folder structure here, and you can set this folder structure up as you like it. In this example, I have three projects that I'm going, and in the first project, the Recovery Matters project, I have a number of subfolders. We can look at that. Let's drive down into the features, right? And as I drive down into the features, you'll notice some information starts to come up because that's where my requirements are. We've actually opened it up into a view, which is a way for us to ask questions from the requirements tool and get responses back. So it's like having that spreadsheet there. And it's a view now that I'm looking at is my features with unattempted test cases. Let's go take a look at it. Right. So as this starts to load, I got the answer. All right. I have these four features that are, ha that are of high priority from a business standpoint, and they have different statuses. And you'll notice here, for example, on this one here, I can go ahead and I can go directly into the test management world. So I'm just following that link. Nothing really changed, you'll notice. So I've opened it up in a test case. Some nice things about this test case on the left side, these are sections that we can capture. Again, totally configurable. And on the right side here, you'll see all the related information. So anything about that has a uh, relationship to it, right? A, a link or something. I can look at my requirements. Right, and here you can see that one that we just left. Next area that I can go to, and, and the way we capture stuff in the, the test world is that we have this concept of a test case, and we have execution records. Since this has never been executed, I'm not gonna be surprised to see that there are no execution records. Let's confirm that it has a script. We see that it does. So in our world, two types of scripts. We have manual scripts, and we have automated scripts. We can execute a manual script and we can capture all the data about that. We can run automated scripts and they can return the data that we determine is necessary for us to answer audit reports or, or different functionality that we need. So the automated scripts like Eggplant and IBM tools, they can send that data back to us, whether it passed and so forth. In this case, I'm gonna run a manual script. I'm gonna go off and start that right now. And as I look at this, you'll notice I have two options. One is I can run this offline, when I'm highlighting right now, which says create a special Excel spreadsheet that then can be used to capture data. And the one I'm gonna run is the run it from IBM. So now we're running it from the test management solution. When I join this, you'll see that I have a number of different options because I have never created a, a test case with this or an execution record, right? I could determine what test plan it wants to go to, what's the release. If there were any environments, you these are again, are all configurable for you. Here's the test script I'm gonna run. This would give me a chance if I had multiple test scripts in on that test case, I could choose which one I wanted. If there was build information or deployment plan, I could add all of that. So we're going off. Now we have the test script, right? We're actually running now. It is keeping track of how long we spend here. I can go ahead and add attachments to it if I wanted to and so forth. 
But in this example here, it says, hey, we select an account. Well, I'm going to just assume that it didn't work. And when I do that, what you'll notice is that I've said there's, there's a failure here. But before I fail it, let's go ahead and create a test, a defect against this. And I'm going to go ahead and create that new defect. And one of the nice things about this is that this is a form that comes from the solution, right? So it's we can set this up to, again to be configurable to how you want. In this example, we've said the name has the summary has to be there, and our system is automatically filled it in based upon the name of the test case. We have to decide what pro project it's against. So in this case here, I'm going to assign it to JK Banking. This is information again that is configurable into the system, and this is a live report, so I can sit in here and go, this is what I observed. So you see that what happened was that I, I was able to add in that when that account list came up, it was blank. Right? Now I can go ahead and say, okay. All right, so now we're gonna fail this step, and this is a one-step script. I'm gonna go ahead and fail it. It's gone ahead, it's completed everything. It's got the timing in here of the test and all sorts of information for us. It also has added in the defect that was discovered. So let's go ahead and close that up. Just again, to show you where we're at, let's go to our test case execution records. You can see I have this defect here, right? It also has the execution record. When I look along the right side here, I can start to see that I've got some things going on. One is this item here, right? 547, that's the defect we just created. I'm gonna go into that real quick and just show you. It has everything we saw before, right? Here's the information I added. The other thing it did for us, which is the power of the solution, is that it actually tracked and added in all the traceability that was the result of that test case. So there are requirements that were impacted, what test case results were, where the test plan was, and if there was any other information that was necessary. This is helpful for both the development team and the BA team. Why do I say that? Let's follow this requirement back. So as we start to follow this back, and I go back to that view, first of all, 586 was our number. And when we look at this, we should hopefully see that 586 is no longer there. Okay. But now, what's more important is, again, as from the VA's world, I can go up in here and say, hey, one of my core features are impacted by defects. And you'll notice right away, I see that. Right? So here's the one that failed earlier. Here's the one that, that we just failed. I also can see that I have on this view, I can see that I have four different types of test cases going on. Two of them have failed. I can see that from the red line. One of them has never been executed, but it's not against our high priority features. So we're not worried about it. And I have another one that has been executed and, and has passed. But I always like to look at it from this standpoint. What happens if we wanna make a change? And this is a capability and the tool that, that I I firmly believe in. So when I hit that requirement, I said, here's my frequency of change. When I go ahead and I expand on this, right, it's showing me all my relationships. You will notice that it actually created a much larger list. And if I go ahead and minimize this down a little bit, just to give you the scope, right? So we've gone ahead and we said, hey, here's a requirement. Here's everything that could potentially be impacted by that requirement. It doesn't mean that it will be, but if I make a change to this requirement, this is potential areas where it could be impacted. An area that I love to go to is what I call fishbone. And in here, we call it the radial layout. When we look at this fishbone, we have some information that we can quickly identify potential problems with. So if any of the fishbones are crossing, let's say this one goes directly over to here, that could be a cause for a potential problem. And I've actually sat down with clients and gone through this with them, where I found seven of these crisscrosses. They came back and told me that five of them were legitimate problems. And three of those, they don't think they would have ever been able to find in testing, and they would have shipped it out with an error. And this was a, a program that was designed to protect uh, Niagara Falls. So we didn't want to have that happen. So at this point, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.